they're adaptive for certain circumstances. They're going to th do better than average in certain circumstances and do worse than others in other circumstances. If you track people closely enough over the course of a lifetime, they will consistently move in and out of different mental health diagnostic categories. So today's patient with schizophrenia was yesterday's boy with conduct disorder or girl with social phobia and tomorrow's elderly person with severe depression. So the DSM artificially divides a few general underlying vulnerabilities into dozens of specific diagnoses. And you can't advertise a drug, a pharmaceutical drug, according to the FDA, according to its 1962 ruling, unless you're applying it to a specific diagnosis. So that's why the DSM has all these different diagnoses to allow pharmaceutical companies to advertise for this specific diagnosis. But for example, uh, drugs for depression, SR, SRIs for, for depression, they work even better for anxiety, but you can't advertise them for anxiety. You can only advertise them for depression. So we have no genetic evidence for the inheritance of specific mental health disorders over and above the inheritance of general liabilities to broad tendencies towards neuroticism, psychosis, externalization. So we have these broad susceptibilities to a whole host of mental disorders and then certain cultural and personal contexts will have a huge role whether or not these predispositions become evident or stay latent. So the DSM has tried to map a landscape of mental disorders by drawing lines around clusters of specific symptoms as if they were islands, but mental disorders are more like ecosystems.